To a musical comedy first-nighter, there is no sound as thrilling, as full of promise and delight as the discordant counterpoint of the orchestra tuning up for the overture. And here tonight, in our musical comedy theatre, a wave of happy anticipation animates the audience as they await the performance of the single E. House lights are dim, except the green shaded lamps on the music stand. A spot picks up the conductor, who acknowledges the applause. And the show begins. A chorus of subdued but delighted oohs and ahs greets the rise of the curtain and the exotic decor of the Singalese first act. We see the veranda of Harry Vereker's tea plantation. Beyond, a glimpse of the lush tropic vegetation. Vivid flowers, tall palms fringing a blue lagoon. And downstage right, some exquisite human scenery that merits close attention. A group of slim, slow-eyed Singalese, the native tea girls employed on the plantation, are waking from their noonday siesta. They begin to apply themselves picturesquely to the important business of tea, tea, tea. We're four young ladies whose pleasant trade is to make tea all the day long. At dawn and daily we get up gaily and take our tea very strong. At noon together in sunny weather we sip our tea in the shade. And then it's splendid when work is ended to chat while tea's being made. We're very gay, working away when we have our tea in the morning, tea in the evening, tea in the afternoon. That's our tune, cup and spoon. Tea of a growing always is going as you see. And there's nothing yet invented. So incomparably scented as our tea, tea, tea. Tea in the morning, tea in the evening, tea in the afternoon. That's our tune, cup and spoon. Tea of a growing, always is going as you see. And there's nothing yet invented. So incomparably scented as our tea, tea, tea. Chatter, it does not matter if young Sahib saunter up. They see us drinking and ask us winking. I say, just keep us a cup. They grow quite witty and call us pretty, but we don't find it amiss. And one will tell us, now don't be jealous, you all may give me a kiss. We often say, Hall, oh, go away. But they come to tea in the morning, tea in the evening, tea in the afternoon. That's all to kiss and that is the flavor they seem to favor, so do we. For the pretty little misses like a lot of sugar kisses in their tea, tea, tea. Tea in the morning, tea in the evening, tea in the afternoon. That's a tune, kiss and spoon. That is the flavor they seem to favor, so do we. For the pretty little misses like a lot of sugar kisses. Young Harry Vereker, who owns the plantation, has fallen in love with one of his tea girls, fragile, flower-like Nanoya. And, what is more, he intends to marry her. At the moment, she is off stage somewhere, picking frangipani. So, Harry takes the opportunity to tell the tea girls and the audience of his love for this pearl of sweet salon. Ah. Uh -huh. 
In musical comedy as in life, the course of true love is subject to interference, and Harry's romance is no exception. Nanoya, at the age of four, was married by proxy to a native nobleman, Hubamba. As a girl in Ceylon is considered marriageable as soon as she's finished cutting her milk teeth. An amiable rascal Babu lawyer, Chambuddy Ram, has got himself appointed guardian of Nanoya after the kindergarten nuptials. Bubamba insists on Chambari producing Nanoya as the second marriage is now due to take place. Lady Pat, Harry's sister from England, appears on the scene, seeing no reason why she shouldn't have some fun with the others on the little island of Gay Salon. It is not so bad a spot, but not like Piccadilly. Temples are there whose ancient air antiquity been set. Nobles who chase their lofty race, the 1500 princess. Shall I proceed their names to read, to read? No, thank you. Weaving in and out of the plot with mad activity is that copper-tinted zany, Chambuddy Ram. Ordered by the judge to produce Bubamba's wife, he divulges Nanoya's identity, and she is handed over to her much-married spouse with scant ceremony. No more will Nanoya see her hari, no more kissy by the cinnamon tree that Nanoya loved. It is all very sad, and she sings this melancholy little song. Oh. 
Stage, little Nanoya, now in bondage, goes to the palace of Bubamba. As the curtain rises, we see the native population on fate. It is the famous Parahara, a feast in honor of the young bride. We hear the excited shouts of Bubamba's followers and the even more excited shrieks of Bubamba's wives as the palace guards frisk them for lethal weapons. A clatter in the courtyard. as Lady Pat enters in a rickshaw. Though the makeup department have done a fine job, isn't there something familiar about the face of the native between the shafts? Why, it's Harry Vereker. And at grave risk to life and limb, Harry is here to snatch from the jaws of matrimony his little Nanoya, his dear little single -y. When sunbeams rise out of the skies, flooding the world with light, and shadows gray vanish away after the weary night. From early morn and the whole day through, till twilight and evening shade, I'm sure to be thinking, thinking of you. My dear little dark-eyed maid, singly, singly, 
I blast my heart to a symbole. You will be true to me, my dear little singly. When day is done, proudly the sun sings from his throne on high. The evening breeze, wooing the trees, murmurs a lullaby. Then stars come out in the evening blue, as visions of daytime fade. And I begin dreaming, dreaming of you, my dear little dark eyes. By this time, most of the first act characters have turned up in Bubamba's palace under various pretexts. Among them, Bobby Warren, Harry's overseer, who loves the ladies and when he's not planting tea, enjoys nothing better than to toss off a musical number or a soft shoe routine. And now, before an admiring circle of coffee-coloured tea girls, he dashes down to the footlights to sing a toast to the ladies. <laughs> I gather girls from near and far, wherever you may be. I never cared how close you are, so don't mind squeezing me. I feel that life is full of charms if I can live like this. A girl or two on either arm, and all the rest to kiss. When you are feeling blue and broke, who is it thinks it's all a joke? It's the ladies, the little ladies. For oh, they look so sweet and smart That they captivate my heart At their glances It simply dances Oh, there's nothing in the world for me but girls It's the ladies, the little ladies For oh, they look so sweet and smart That they captivate my heart At their glances It simply dances Oh, there's nothing in the world for me but girls The part I like for it played again I like to trot a girl about in London, I confess. Although she's always is without a pocket in her dress. I love it when a lady pops her little arm in mine to take her down to Marvel Heart to tea or have some wine. I had some money long ago. Where's it gone to? I don't know. Ask the lady, the little lady. For oh, they look so sweet to smart that they kept but the palace plot to liberate Nenoya comes to a climax at last. Aided and abetted by Cham Buddy Ram, Lady Pat persuades Bubamba to let the captive Nenoya ride in Harry's rickshaw. Rickshaws are more popular in salon than taxis and much more fun as you're allowed to whip the driver. But little does Bubamba suspect the deception. With rare geniality, he dispatches Nanoya on her joyride. Alone, Nanoya rejoices at the prospect of her reunion with Harry, and in sentimental mood, pauses to wonder why he always calls her his little slow eye. You met a little girl one day, far away. She'd not got very much to say, not that day. And yet you love her, so I can't think why. Was it a something in her eyes? She had little smiles, eyes of deepest brown, sort of don't you know eyes, eyes that never 
But another romance has been budding in the background. The dashing Bobby Warren and the meddlesome Lady Pat, who parted years before on account of Bobby's objections to Pat's Pekingese pup. Sorry I was rude about the peak, says Bobby. Oh, forget it, says Lady Pat. I got rid of it anyway. But wait till you see my giant panda. If only all the world had been made for you and me. We shouldn't need a branch or an ABC. The days would all be fine. The sun would always shine. Me, me, for me. And me. Should there be a night without a moon, we would get another very soon. Every bit of news would be quite true. The papers would be full of me. Me too. If you and I. And I and you. Upon this little world would be the only two. We live the night of the stars would sing a lullaby. But you and I. And I and you upon this little world are not the only two. And so you see we are to be quite glad there's even you and me. Nanoya and Harry have now made a completely successful getaway, and Chambody Ram hits on the brilliant scheme for covering their tracks. The guests assemble for the wedding, but when Boobamba goes over to the bridal palanquin and orders his beautiful one to raise her veil, what does he see? Why? Chambody! <laughs> Everybody laughs. Chambody stole my gal, gasps the enraged Boobamba. And at this moment, Nanoya and Harry, who have been married by a native priest, come on in triumph for the finale and the vivid spectacle of the Parahara. (laughs) ¶¶ 